Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back. Um, if you've been following me for a while, you'll remember that I just got an awesome custom pick guard in the mail from uh, a guy named Troy down in Miami from Noise Guitar Mods. Pretty wild. Check it out. If you haven't had a look at his site yet, I'll post a link in the description, his eBay. You can check out the, uh, the other work that he's done. So today's a pretty exciting day. I'm on my way into the shop right now. We're gonna get started on the paint job uh, for this Stratocaster. And generally, we're gonna take, yeah, what used to be a cheap <laughs> cheap Squire Stratocaster that I got for like under 200 bucks Canadian, so like $30 American or something like that. I'm kidding. Uh, and we're gonna turn that into something awesome. So. The neck on it is already pretty good. They're generally pretty foolproof when it comes to the whole, you know, you're buying from a reputable brand. It's a, it's a Squire. They're fine. Um, there are faster necks out there. There are, you know, better necks out there. But it works perfectly well. The fret ends are rounded. It's comfortable to play. So there's really nothing I have to do with that, which is nice because necks are a challenge sometimes. Uh, what I will do is a separate tutorial on how to paint a guitar neck because... I don't do those very often. But today what we're gonna do is take this Stratocaster body, and maybe I'll do a quick flashback here if I can figure it out so you can know the one I'm talking about. It's already been disassembled. If you don't know how to do that, have a look at my video on how to disassemble your guitar. And then move on to this one, where, uh, well, and you gotta tape it too. I can't remember if I did that in that video. But anyway, tape off the, the cavities. It doesn't get much more straightforward than that. And then, yeah, have a look at this one. What we're gonna do is a, an interesting paint job here. Um, and then we'll install that pick guard. And in general, this is gonna end up being, well, awesome. That's the idea. So without further ado, let's head into the shop. All right, so. You've all seen this probably. Maybe you haven't. If you haven't, hey, welcome to the channel. Anyway, uh, for starters, I gotta remove some of this paint. There's too much on here. You don't want like four or five paint jobs building up, particularly if you're planning on keeping the one you're doing, as opposed to, you know, just repainting it several times like I've generally done with this cheap old body. So uh, yeah, we're gonna take this cheap old body and in order to make it awesome, I'm gonna have to remove a couple layers here. So I'm gonna mask up, fire up the compressor and use my pneumatic sander. Uh, and for the next little while, because the compressor will be on and I would like you to be able to hear me, we're gonna go into voiceover. So let's get rolling. All right, so like I said, we gotta take off uh, a few layers of paint here, as you'll see. So I'm going in with, I think some 220 grit. I might've started at 150 and then worked my way up and I, I end up going all the way up to about 600 grit paper here. You can see kind of the old paint jobs underneath there coming back as I, uh, as I make my way through these layers of paint. And there are several. So again, when you're doing a paint job, you don't want more than about two paint jobs worth of paint on your guitar. After that, you start to run the risk of some product failures, so go ahead and sand back if you're in that situation. Now, likely you aren't in that situation. You've probably just got a freshly painted guitar, in which case all you really need to do is take some 600 or 800 or 400, something in that range. I usually go with six. Um, some 600 grit paper, and go ahead and sand the gloss off of that guitar so that you can... Uh, make sure that your new paint is going to stick. Bear in mind that fresh paint is not going to stick properly to a gloss finish. So again, you need to scuff up that finish so that you end up with, you know, a, kind of a, a matte surface, if you will, so that the new paint can grip mechanically to that surface because it won't be able to bond chemically to paint that's already cured. If your paint is shiny, that is, <laughs> that's going to be a little bit risky. Uh, you could end up with your fresh paint job kind of delaminating or, you know, doing some crackling, get the snakeskin thing going on. It's just generally not a good time. So be careful. Give it a good scuff beforehand. It's not a big deal if you go through your clear coat into your paint underneath because you're going to paint over it again afterward. Once you've done your sanding, 
Make sure you give your guitar a good wipe down with some wax and grease remover. Windex will suffice anything that's going to pull off wax, grease, and dust. It's very important. As you can see, they get dirty. So here I am applying some dark sealer. This is just uh, an automotive acrylic made by a company called Auto Air. Uh, well, actually, it's made by a company called Createx, but Auto Air is a sub-brand of them. So I'm spraying my black on there, and this, this footage is in real time. So I'll show you the whole coat of the black so you can kind of get a feel for how long it takes to throw a good coat of, uh, of paint onto a guitar like this. And the process that I use to do it. You can see that I'm starting with the edges and that's because when you spray you get overspray. So I'm getting overspray on the faces of the guitar which is fine because one of the ways to get rid of overspray is to simply spray over it. And I want as nice a surface as possible on the faces of the guitar, so I spray over my overspray that's gotten onto the face, and it ends up looking nice. So what I'm going to do, I spray this, I wait a few minutes for this paint to basically flash off or matte out. It's a waterborne paint, so it doesn't quite have the same flash principles or properties as a solvent-based paint. With a solvent-based paint, I'd wait about 10 minutes. This stuff I can layer up. Uh, just a few minutes apart as long as it dries so here I am probably you know five minutes later or so spraying my aluminum base this is kind of my ground coat if you will for this particular paint job and I'm just dusting on a couple light coats you can see I'm kind of cutting the footage now because you've already seen me do a full coat but I do it the exact same way I go about 50% overlap on my uh, my fan pattern as I spray and I'm probably 8 to 10 inches away from the guitar. So pretty straightforward. And I end up with this nice aluminum base coat. A little bit of sparkle in it, a little pearlescence. And now I can move on to making it more interesting. So due to a personal lack of creativity, I'm just going to go in and put a little patterning in with the airbrush and a nice kind of transparent mix of some black. Now it's not fully transparent, obviously. It's, it's black, um, but I've got it reduced fairly substantially so that I can do a little bit of shading and give a little bit of a, a 3D kind of ripple effect to this. Although not, not a, a huge ripple effect because I don't want the thing to look like a flag. <laughs> but anyway, I've kind of fast forwarded through this part. This isn't an airbrush tutorial obviously, but you can do any kind of paint job you want on here. I'm going in now with some candies. I'm going to do a kind of a burst effect. I'm going to do green in the center. So I've got Auto Air's kind of newer candy O2 paint here. The, uh, I believe it's poison green or toxic green or something like that. And I've got my fan pattern on my gun turned all the way down so I can use it almost like a, a giant airbrush to fill in this center area. These acrylics, you want to make sure you're putting them on light. You don't spray too heavy with them, so I'm giving it, you know, a little air without paint occasionally to make sure that I'm not building it up too much. You kind of just dust them on slowly. With a solvent-based candy, you have to operate a little bit differently. So here I am throwing some blue around the outside to do kind of, a, like I said, a burst effect. I think lagoon burst or a dragon burst or whatever you want to call it. But again, I'm doing it all in candy paints so that I get the sparkle from the silver coming through, or the aluminum, and I get all the graphic work from the airbrush coming through as well. So if I had done some more complex graphics, I would still be able to see all of that through this candy paint. You do have to be careful with these transparent paints. If you're using more than one like this and you layer them up, they will kind of build up in such a way that it looks almost as though you mix them. So in here, any areas that fade between the two paints will get a slight teal look, as you can see. But if they weren't complementary colors, for example, if I were doing an orange and blue, I'd end up with like a brown in between, and that probably wouldn't be too good. So here I kind of waffled a bit. I put a coat of teal on the back of the guitar, as you can see here. And then I decided that it wasn't really what I was looking for. It wasn't quite dark enough for my liking, so I went in with that candy blue again to kind of let it match the rest. And I just gave it a good coat of that, just one coat here to darken it up. 
didn't need any more than that because the teal is darker than the silver so I ended up with a nice deep looking blue finish I still got that candy effect you can see up close the light going through the blue hitting the sparkle in the teal and coming back out so I personally think that this kind of tri coat look as we refer to it um, has a nice depth to it and looks really nice at this point I've moved on to the clear coat my first coat of clear is always light, so you'll be able to see that I kind of spray it lighter than I normally would, and that's to just prevent runs and allow that first coat to kind of bind on and give the subsequent coats something nice to grab onto. So as I do the face here, you can see I'm spraying very quickly, moving the gun pretty fast, holding it a fair distance away, and I don't have a full gloss coat. I've just got a nice, what, what I refer to as a tack coat. Now once I've done this coat, I'll wait 10 minutes, and then I'll come back in again and do a full coat. And I do this twice more. So I end up with three coats in total, the first one being a tack coat. You can do four coats in a session with this stuff. This is a catalyzed automotive polyurethane. It's a uh, four to one mix. You can also get it in a two-to-one mix, a slightly different product, but it has the same effect. It's basically the clear coat that you would put on a car and spray it on using the same equipment. So here I am, still moving relatively quickly because my gun puts out a lot of paint, as it should, um, but doing a heavier coat this time so I get a full gloss. Now this clear coat goes everywhere, and I'm kind of fearing for my camera at this point, so I don't believe that I ended up filming the third coat but I ended up doing three. And here we go, you can see the product that we're left with. Pretty nice gloss on there, I'm happy with it. I hope you guys like it. Join me for the next video when we put this one back together and test it out with the new cool pit guard that I've got. Don't forget to check out uh, the link in the description so you can see more of those. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.